radio scene. So welcome back. Welcome back. That's your Chrissy Live, RadioScene.com, radio that you can watch. Um, while we're waiting for our interview to begin, I want to get into a song. Shout out to my son, the New York General. Sent me some, some new stuff. Fire, as always. Like, I think his flow is ridiculous. Um, and shout out to D Black. We got Bully checking in, too. So shout out to D Black for checking in. But we're going to get into my son's new song, Freeze. Rock out with this for a minute. Enjoy. Mr. Below Zero Degrees I'm a hero to G to the chicks I'm the fantasy Butt naked feeding grapes on the canopy I demand to see these niggas resumes They never there, I'm every place Heavy, I win every race Yeah I swear to Reverend Mace, when he was M.A. Dollar Sign E, we was driving Benzes without an ID. J.D. and Puffy was trying to sign me, and I was being f***ed up like Muhammad Ali. Yadi Ali, your chick all on the go, but you got on the Audemars. Your wrist might shine, but your lyrics all lies. Your wrist might shine, but your lyrics all lies. Your wrist might shine, but your lyrics all lies. All lies. You better. Let me introduce you to my mister. Let me introduce you to my mister. Let me introduce you to my mister. Nice to meet you. It's him again, certified black boy. Hot boy, you French, you get shot, boy. I turn chicks to statues. Lordy, they own me like tattoos. I'm that dude, I'm so nice. I get it how I live and I'm about that life. So I grind all day and I'm out all night until there's no work left. Then I'm alright. I'm G'd up, these cats just rap that. I move packs in the NY snapback. Now they let rats trap, where they do that at? Now that's a sticky situation, rat trap. Yeah, so if y'all heard those lyrics, he said, your wrist might shine, but your lyrics all lie. Like, so true. Like, my, I, I got to give it to Maestro. He's, he's definitely crazy, crazy with it. A um, couple things I want to give you guys real quick. He said he just called. A um, couple things I want to give you guys is today is my mmm segment. So I'm going to feature one model the last Thursday of every month. So if you know any models who want to have their pictures and their information aired, definitely send it to my email, thatchickchrissy at gmail.com. It's C-R-I-S-S-Y. Um, get those pictures in. We'll feature models. If you know models, tell them let's do this. Let's get them some publicity. And... Make sure you guys hit up my website, www.tcs, for that chick's hotspot.com. Go on there, build a profile. You can network. You can promote yourself. Um, you know, I throw all kinds of stupid stuff on there for you guys to read to keep you entertained. So uh, go to the website and support. You could also follow me, subscribe to my YouTube page, which is youtube.com backslash that chick Chrissy and then of course become a member on radiocene.com alright you good alright guys so my interview that I'm so excited about my special guest is on the phone actually he's calling in very very busy man so as I said we have Mr. Rob Love What's good, Rob? What's going on, Chrissy? What's going on? Thank you so much for taking time. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I wanna, I wanna ask you a couple questions, but um, I mean, there, there's just so much that you've done. So I, I guess we'll start with, wh what do you consider was your real first job in this industry? Wow, yeah, you know, it's really funny. Um, in the industry, um, I, I kind of came in the industry as a, a musician, a percussionist, playing the drums and 
and trying to rap, but I didn't really have the, the skills like that, that 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 was was competitive enough. Um, so my real my first job, I think, was probably passing out flyers at my pastor's <laughs> uh, uh, for my pastor's uh, uh, auto auto mechanic <laughs> auto mechanic shop. Wow! And that's how I first got my little sweet taste of uh, of promotions. Um, so I, I guess even though it was something that was not related to music, but it was the process of what it was to, um, you know, advertise and alert people and get people's attention and galvanize them around an idea, I guess that was the first kind of uh, footprint. So okay. as it relates to music, mm-hmm. um, I would say uh, my first job was a promoter, you know. As a promoter. Um, a party promoter, right. Now, you went over to Def Jam. And if I'm not mistaken, you were with Def Jam for a long time, like 10 years or something, right? Yeah, it's about that. I did a, uh, I did a bit over there at Universal Music Group. <laughs> you I'm not did a at Def Jam. Um, <laughs> But before that, you know, I started a production company called ARC Production, mm-hmm. and I helped finance my way through college um, with throwing parties. Um, um, school, Norfolk State University, which I attended, I was the, the student government business, the student government association business manager, and I handled uh, all the concerts and all the entertainment that was going on on campus. So I kind of parlayed my on campus and off campus entertainment talent to create a production company that uh, later on kind of morphed into me consulting and working at Def Jam and, and helping build some of the biggest artists that uh, we all know and love. All right now, I tried when I, when I was introducing you um, prior to you calling in, I told people about a couple of the different things that you do, but could you um, let the listeners know some of the titles that you hold? Wow. Um, CEO of, uh, and founder of Launchpad Worldwide Incorporated, uh, vice president of promotions and marketing for uh, Manalis G60, uh, and uh, the business entertainment developer for... Uh, sports and entertainment for a technology company called QR Media Group. So basically, I am finding uh, 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 bridging gaps between uh, sports and entertainment and uh, technology. Nice. Nice. Can you tell us a little bit about Launchpad Worldwide? Uh, Sure. Uh, Launchpad Worldwide is a... um, is a, uh, a boutique consulting agency uh, with a high-level client list. Um, I work with, you know, um, you know, rock and roll Hall of Famers. And, um, I work with, you know, several different uh, DJs all across the country. Um, I work with uh, uh, hip-hop uh, icon Noriega from Component Noriega. Um, um, and I have a you know a, a roster of different artists that I consult and uh, manage, and you know I work along with and manage a production company, uh, a production team called the Superiors, um, and um, and you know that's just you know basically what I do. When when you say work with. Well. When you say work with, what are what are some of the different things that you do? I mean, I know that you manage Nori, mm-hmm. but with like the Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, what what type of role do you play with them? Um, you know, it, it, it's somewhat of a, a managerial uh, role as well, um, but it's more of, of of you know helping and, and coordinating and, and consulting. Okay. Um, but you know, it's it's all of the, it's 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 all of those duties as well as management. You know, just making sure that you know the day to day, you know, business is, is is straight, and you know, and helping with uh, you know creating new business and bookings and 
you know, travel and all that stuff. So. At, at any point when you, e- even later on in life, but when you first began, was um, there ever that one person that kind of excited you to work with? Uh, it's really, it's a really interesting question because, yeah, you know, um, you know, one person that I'm really still excited to work with um, is LL Cool J. Nice. Uh, because LL has transitioned, you know, tremendously from um, being a Queens rapper to being a <laughs> a, 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 a a movie star and uh, a television star as well. Right. It's so funny, when I was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and LL was there and I met a young lady that was like, you know, actually she's a little older lady. She's like, I took this picture with this, this celebrity, but, you know, he looks familiar. I think I've seen him on TV. And I was like, that's LL Cool J. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's just like, it's just, it's just really, you know, it just really amazed me how, you know, this industry, how you can become famous, you know, um, in different uh, 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 categories, and people know you for film and television, but don't know that you actually have, you know, a recording career. Right. You know, and it's funny that you said LL because, you know, as I'm starting to grow in this business a little bit, and I'm even getting, like, different followers on Twitter, and, you know, people who are pretty substantial, I think my most excited was when LL followed me. Like, once I seen LL Cool J is following you, like, I lost it. Because, I, I mean, I grew up from, you know, listening to radio. I mean, way back. Now, but see, you know, this is, the, this is why, you know, artists like LL and Jay-Z, they have stayed relevant uh, for a long time. It's because they realize how they need to be connected with, uh, with, with what's happening now, you know? Right, um, right. What's urgent. Able, able to transition through time. and Almost like a, a male version of the whole Madonna thing, right? Like just constantly reinventing themselves. Right. But, you you know, you have to be mentally in that space. You have to be hungry for, you know, learning more. And you have to still, you know, really, you know, feel. It's like being an athlete, you know what I'm saying? You have to still love the game, you know, even though you've got, you know, Crack ribs and broken bones, you know. You right. still, you know, get out there and throw the, you know, and throw the sheepskin around. So, you know, it's it, it, it's it's just it's just always um, it's always inspirational to see um, artists that still have that passion, you know, that last, you know, decades. Right. What do you feel was the toughest role that you've had to play though in the time that you've been doing this? Well, you know, and and, and, and and navigating the moving artists around, you know, the, the thing that I think is primarily the hardest thing is having to lie and, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, I think all lies are bad, but there is such thing as a good lie, like, you know, you know, convincing somebody that they need to be you know, downstairs in the lobby, you know, a half an hour before they really need to be down there so they can be on time. You know, right. that's a good lie. Like, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, you got to do the Jedi mind trick those people sit down. You're like, you know, you're like, or you tell people, yo, yeah, I'm coming to your show. You know you're not going to the show. It's like, man, I feel bad. I don't like, I don't like to tell them no. I don't like a lot. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the biggest challenges that I've been facing. Um, um, in, in this in this whole this whole, whole journey of uh, of entertainment. So so based on what you just talked about, do you have white clientele as well as black clientele? Of course, I don't discriminate. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm leading I'm leading into a joke here. Do you have to tell the white people it's a half an hour early too? <laughs> Um, we, talk, we talk yep. about BPT and CPT all the time on the show. Some of them. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> the divas, I mean, right? The you divas? Know, you, just, you just become so conditioned to do it that way that that's just how it comes out, you know? <laughs> and, you know, it may be a little different. You may be like, hey, you want to get a cup of coffee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than, yeah, why am I here? You know? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, um... 
what advice if if you're if you're trying to give some advice um you know without putting your consultation fee out there if you're trying to give some advice to different younger people who are looking into doing things like promotion or management let's start with the promotion what's what, what do you think is like a valuable lesson that you learned that you could pass someone on to kind of spare them the heartache um you know, one, nothing never moves. Nothing moves without a budget. Um, two, you always have to be creative. You have to outthink your competition. Um, and you have to really love to do this. Right. Because there's, you know, there's plenty of days where there's no pay. There's plenty of days where you spend your own money. There's plenty of days where, you know, where you don't get the acknowledgement for what you do. Like, a lot of people don't know a lot, half of the, the, the promotional uh, uh, contributions that I made to the to the game because, you know, it's, you know, everybody got short-term memory, you know? Right. And everybody don't, um, everybody don't, um, everybody don't, don't do enough, like, there's no credit behind, you know, promotional and marketing um, strategies that... You can, you know, like when you pick up an album, you can see the production credits. You can see who made the beat. You see who wrote the lyrics and things of that nature. There's, in marketing promotion, there's really no, you know, uh, um, credit that's associated with, right. the, with, with the creative. And, um, and, and, and it's, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. And then, you know, people steal and, you know, people, you know, claim that they, you know, right, they, right. Something that they did. And, you know, it's like, you know, you have to jog and, you know, fight for notoriety and things of that nature. Um, so, you know. It's, it's kind of like if, you, if, you, if you're the originator of something, you have to make it big enough so people at least try to remember that you were the first one to do it because everybody else will jump right on your coattail, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right, so what, what do you I have had, coming? What well, do you... I, I, had, I had my production company one time. You know, um, I was doing a show with uh, uh, Naughty by Nature, um, and I actually had somebody come into my uh, come into my venue and, 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 and flash a business card and say that he was the president of ARC Production. Wow. And I said, yeah, okay, so, you know, you give me $25 to get in. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, what, what do you have? And, and it was funny, I, I didn't realize it, but I, 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 I kind of, I've kind of created that monster because my strategy or my, my, my thought process was to make my production company feel like it was the boy next door or the girl next door or or, or the homeboys up the block. Right. Or, you know, the studio that was right in your neighborhood where you felt proud to wearing uh, an ARC production shirt because you know somebody that represents that and that's involved with it. So I had a lot of people thinking that they were, <laughs> you know, that they were principals. <laughs> <laughs> What do you what do you have coming up? What are you working on now? Uh, I am working on the um, the welcome home reception to the track and field athletes for the Olympics uh, in London and in America, London side and in America. Um, that's on the sports side. On the entertainment side, I am working uh, with the legendary Grandmaster Flash, getting some new production that's going to hit the marketplace really, really soon. Um, I am uh, also uh, actively uh, uh, taking dates for Nori uh, to do his um, his uh, 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 steroids on crack mixtape, you know, is such a phenomenal piece, and it has such great records on there, and he's been very active and busy um, with that offering out there in the marketplace. So we're moving around doing shows in different cities and things of that nature. Right. Uh, and shooting videos. Um, and um, currently getting geared up for Hot 97 Summer Jam this Sunday. Nice. Um, which I'm going to make a surprise Def Jam's back appearance. <laughs> with the whole crew, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. Well, I'm gonna have to um go to commercial, but before I do that, I wanna you know. How much is the commercial? I wanna pay for the commercial. Let's keep going. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call you after the show. But um, what I want to do is, um, before I end the call with you, I want to give you a chance. If you want people to find you, I don't know who you want to find you, but if you want people to find you, give them, give them your links real quick, please. Um, Twitter is NYRobLove. That's N-Y-R-O-B-L-O-V-E. You know, Rob Love Facebook, Rob Love LinkedIn, you know what I'm saying, Launchpad Worldwide, uh, at Launchpad WW on Twitter, follow that, you know, um, and be on the lookout for LaunchpadWorldwide.com coming real soon. All right, I appreciate your time. Definitely an honor to have you on the phone, and I will get back to you after the show. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye-bye. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. RadioScene.com. RadioScene.com.